So for the next six functional groups, what I want to do is I want to kind of clarify something. Have you guys heard this word carbonyl? Maybe your professor calls it carbonyl. Totally fine. However you want to say it, that's fine. In fact, you're probably going to notice this semester that I'm going to say some things very different from the way your professor says it. Maybe because like your professor speaks a different language, mostly as a first language, or also just because, you know, people have different ways of saying these molecules. Okay. But so I'm just going to say carbonyl. Carbonyl looks like this. It's a C double bond O. Okay. And a carbonyl is not a functional group. Okay. It is only a component of many functional groups. So if I say the word carbonyl, that doesn't mean that that's a functional group. It just means that's a part of the functional group. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and talk first about functional groups without carbonyls, and then we're going to add some carbonyls and see how that changes them. Okay. So the first one, not first, sorry. The third one that we're going to talk about today is alcohols. Alcohols are defined as ROH, any carbon group that's attached to an OH. And um, there's lots of different alcohols, but the important thing to know is that the way that you name the degree on them is the same as H's, once again. Okay? So now we know that alkyl halides and alcohols are both named exactly the same in terms of degrees. Okay? So here I have an alcohol for you. Please don't try to drink this alcohol. This would probably kill you. Okay? The only alcohol that's safe for drinking is ethanol. Even if you just take off one carbon to make it methanol, it's toxic. Like 50 grams of that and you're dead. Okay? So, so they're not all fun in games. Okay? We actually use these in the lab a lot. So um, what type of alcohol would this be though? What do you guys think? So it's attached to one carbon that that's fine. Remember that we say that you always look at the carbon that that carbon is attached to. That carbon is attached to only one carbon. Okay. This is the same as hydrogen. So this is going to be a primary alcohol. Okay. And that's how we categorize it. All right. I'm going to give you guys more practice with this later. Okay. Then let's talk about the next functional group, amines. Okay. So amines, the way that they work is that they actually have carbon groups directly attached to the N, which means that there's a lot of different types of amines that you could have. One of the most common would just be having NH3. Okay. That's a type of amine. But if you add R groups to it, that's also an amine. So if I had R N H2, that is also an amine. If I switched out hydrogens for R's, that will still be an amine. So then let's say that I had R2NH. That just means I'm taking one of the H's and I'm replacing it with the R. And then finally, I could even have R3N. And that would also, all of these would be types of amines. Okay? As long as basically it is a carbon group, carbons or hydrogens attached to a nitrogen, that would be an amine. Okay? So what I want to do here is talk about the degrees. Okay. This is an example of an amine. Anytime you see just a nitrogen single bonded to carbons, you're in good luck. That's an amine. All right. The way that we, oh man. So I just realized that there are typos here. So I'm going to go ahead and scratch those out. Okay. The degree of the amine and the degree of the amide. Sorry about that. Okay. So go ahead and scratch those out. Sorry my bad. But the degree of the amine is actually determined the same way as carbon. Okay. So in this case, that's why I have a star next to it. Cause I want you guys to remember this, this trips everyone up where they think that the amine is named like the alkyl halide or whatever. So you get them mixed up. So what that means is that the primary, secondary, tertiary is based on how many carbons are directly attached to the N, not to the carbon that's attached to the N. So in this case, what type of amine would this be right here? This ringed structure, what kind of amine? This would be a secondary amine. Okay. And the reason is because the N is directly attached to one, two carbons. So this one is basically considered like a carbon instead of like a hydrogen. All right. Keep that in mind. And that's a huge distinction. Okay. Then finally we have ether. Okay. Ether is abbreviated R. O R an easy way that I always remembered it is I'm an ether roar. Yeah, that was awkward, right? So, um, anyway, I'm an ether. You're scary. Blow up. Ethers actually do blow up. 
So maybe that helps you remember. All it is is an oxygen in between two carbon groups, okay? And honestly, we don't need to name degrees for these because there's only one type. So that's it. Just remember ROR and you're good to go.